What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex, my name is Travis. Today's video is going to be part two in our DIY calc reactor build series. Now if you didn't see part one where I built the reactor, I will put a link to that video in the description below. But in this one, we're gonna be setting it up on the new 300 gallon build, or technically the six month old 300 gallon build. And we're going to be adding the calc washer, setting a current drip rate per minute, as well as doing the programming within the apex. Now as a bonus, I'm also gonna be showing you a one week update on this and some of the things that I've done regarding uh, adjusting the flow rate to adjust uh, the alkalinity within the 300 gallons. So let's go to get started. Now setting this up is pretty simple. I'm first gonna add a second ATO uh, pump to my reservoir there, which will be solely for uh, feeding this reactor. Now some of you might be asking, why don't I just use my current ATO pump to feed the reactor and turn going into the sump? Now the reason why I don't wanna do that is I wanna have consistency and ease of programming. Now because evaporation is different every day for this tank based on the weather outside, if the door is open, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, basically I wanna have consistent numbers on a daily basis. That way I can dial in my calcium reactor to work alongside with this calc reactor and I don't have to worry about having any uh, fluctuations because I might have evaporated a gallon extra one day opposed to the day before. Now, with that being said, this single ATO pump is about 250 gallons per hour. It will go through a check valve, which is made for an RODI system, and then feed into the reactor. All right, now that we have the input taken care of, let's go to move over to the output. Now, this is where I'm going to be adding my ball valve, which will then control the drip rate or influent rate to the sump. Now, yes, I said ball valve. I do plan on adding a gate valve down the road if this one just doesn't keep a consistent flow rate. But for right now, for the sake of saving money on this DIY project, spending the $3 opposed to the $26 is definitely the better option for right now. Now, once that's connected, I'm going to add some RODI tubing, run it down and behind the sump and into the designated tube holder. All right, now that we have everything connected, it's time to add the calc washer to the reactor. I'm gonna to go to start off with one cup just to see how high it fills up in the bottom of the reactor there once everything settles in. And once it did, it was about the first one and a half inches of that reactor, which is more than enough for this size. Now, of course, I will have to top this off as time goes on, and uh, I will just kind of uh, monitor it and see how much it goes down over time. And then, of course, just top off with quarter cups or half cups as needed. All right, now that the reactor is sealed and filled up, I'm gonna go ahead and run the mixing pump for just a minute or two to get a general idea of what it looks like while it's mixing up. And then once everything settles down, we'll come back and start adjusting our drip rate. All right, now that the reactor is calmed down, it's time to go ahead and adjust the drip rate. Now I decided to start low at about 35 milliliters per minute, and I will say that later on I adjusted to 60 milliliters per minute. And the only reason why I wanted to start low is because with anything new to a system, it's always best to start very low, even with two parts and stuff like that, and then make your adjustments based on your alkalinity level over the next several days. And that's exactly what I did. So with that said, let's go ahead and move over to the apex. I'll show you the programming. Also, we'll look at my aquatic log for a couple days of adjustments and show you guys exactly what I did for this reactor. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look at here is the calc mixing pump. Now this is the pump that will mix the calc washer so many times per day. Now I decided to set it up to mix four times a day, basically every six hours, midnight, 6 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m., okay? Now basically, with any timers in the apex, if you don't add the defer after it, you can't go any lower than two minutes. Even though this is set for one minute, it's gonna stay on for two minutes as default. Even if you set it to a zero two minutes, it will stay on for three minutes, okay? That's just kind of how it is in here. You can add the defer timer if you want, but just to keep programming simple for those of you guys following along, just remember uh, it's gonna be one additional minute regardless of what you add here after your programming, okay? So this is the mixing pump. Again, it will mix four times a day and this will never change. I will base my dosing around the mixing time. All right, now that you guys have seen the mixing pump programming, let's go to move into the ATO pump that will be feeding this reactor. Now, just a heads up, this is what I'm currently dosing. This is not what I started off with. So if it looks confusing or it looks like a lot, uh, that's because there is a lot of dosing up to 16 times per day right now, and it's on for five minutes at a time. But I just wanted to show you this here in the apex so you knew how I was setting up the uh, dosing of times uh, within the apex. Okay, so let's go to move over to my aquatic log where I kept a running log for a few days or about a week and a half or so of what I was doing every single day to the system so you guys can see how I progressed um, while setting it up. So here's the first day, May 16th. Um, I'm just going to go through and show you what I put in here. We have the current 35 milliliters per minute drip rate. And then we have the how many times I dosed uh, that day and how long it was on for. So it was four times for the first night and it was only on for two minutes. And of course it's at night because I'm using this to elevate the pH within the system. And then what my current pH and the max was uh, throughout the day as well as my current alkalinity level. 
Now, this was the first day, and I did make minor adjustments for the next several days where I increased um, the amount of times it was on just because my alkalinity was dropping. And um, it definitely has increased the pH. But one thing you have to understand is uh, when I, like for example, this day, I made a video for the channel and the system was off for 45 minutes. So that's 45 minutes that the system is just kind of chilling, which definitely impacts the pH. You guys will see that in the logs probably during the update video. So little things like that definitely impact the pH. The, the most important thing that I'm focus on, focusing on uh, for this is uh, the alkalinity level. So we started off at 9.1 and just a heads up, I'm not making any adjustments on my calcium reactor. It's simply the Kalkwasser reactor at the moment. And uh, it went down a little bit to 8.9 the next day, then 8.8. .8. So I'm slowly increasing uh, how many times I'm dosing to help compensate for that drop in alkalinity, as well as how long it's on for. So you can see that it dropped from 8.8 8, uh, to 8.6. Of course, I did a water change that day as well. And um, I'm still at that 35 milliliters uh, per minute uh, drip rate and that's about four or five days after so then I decided to start changing things up a little bit more drastically because the PA or sorry the alkalinity is still dropping over the several days and uh, I decided to go ahead and increase um, the amount of time significantly probably to the max that I could uh, based on the mixing pump so 16 times per day and then I also increased it to three minutes and that was about seven days after I started the system and you guys can see, I mean, there's a ton of logs here. I don't want to go through all of it because it can get quite confusing. The point is, is as time goes on and I'm watching my alkalinity level drop, you'll see it got down to 8.3 from that seven, uh, that 9.1, which is pretty significant. So increasing it and increasing it, and it finally started going up after I started dosing for three minutes, went back up to 8.4. So then 8.5 after increasing uh, to five minutes and then the amount. And then it got to the point where... Uh, the 35 milliliters per minute just wasn't enough. So I went ahead and increased it uh, to 60 milliliters uh, per minute and then actually took the time and brought it down a little bit because I was dosing a qu a quite a bit more uh, during the time that it was on. And then you can see that the alkalinity level is going up, came down a little bit more. And then right now it's sitting at... Um, 8.8 .8. so i haven't uh, done any more logs on it because i just felt that it was unnecessary and it gets really confusing but uh, currently we're at 60 milliliters per minute it is dosing 16 times per day and it's on for uh, five minutes at a time so that's kind of what i'm working with right now so 4800 milliliters in a 24-hour period and i'm sitting at 8.8 .8, um, dkh now that definitely sounds confusing i hope that it kind of makes sense for the most part basically the point is you want to start low and then slowly, gradually increase the amount of time that you turn the reactor on, how many times you turn it on, and how long it's you know it's going to be on for throughout the entire day. And uh, that's just based on your own system. It's going to be different for every single tank. You're just going to have to monitor your alkalinity level. And then once your alkalinity level is stable, then I'd focus on your pH and kind of see where it's at and to see if it's even worth having on your system. And I can tell you right out right out the bat that it's definitely increasing my pH, and I'm happy with the results uh, that I'm getting from the Kalkwasser reactor. All right, now that you guys have seen the mixing schedule as well as the dosing schedule, let's go to move over here to the log over the last couple days just to show you how they work together and how the dosing is set up. So we're going to come here into the Apex and hit our uh, calc feed pump and then come over and compare it to our calc mixing pump and then come over here and go over the last few days. As you can see here, it never doses at the same time and you see this little gap. Basically, once the mixing pump is on, it turns off two minutes later and then there's a two hour period before I start dosing again. And basically that allows all that time for the calc to just settle at the bottom of the reactor. It's still saturated, but it allows it to settle and there's no chances of accidentally dosing that fine uh, particles into your tank causing an issue with your pH and alkalinity. So this is kind of how I have it set up and I definitely recommend you give at least an hour, if not two hours uh, between mixing and then your initial dose. All right, now that you guys have seen the build process as well as the programming for this reactor, I just want to go over some basic questions that you guys have had in the comment section, as well as some that I think you might be asking outside of it. Now, the first one is, why did I add this calc reactor to my system in the first place? And what is the whole point of it? Well, I added it because you guys are requesting a DIY project. So instead of going and spending a ton of money, I fear this would be a great way to add some content to my channel. And I think that you guys that want to spend a lot of money, this is a good project for those of you who want to use a calc reactor. And the second reason is I didn't have uh, any access to really good build threads or anything out there uh, when I started this. So I figured I'd go ahead and kind of do my own in-depth video series to help those of you who are interested in the project. 
Now, what is the purpose of it being on the system? Well, to simply elevate pH. That's it. Uh, notoriously, regardless of uh, the calcium reactor and where it's dripped into the influent rate being in the refugium and having the dual chamber, the pH is usually really low or around the 7.7 .7 to 7.8 on most tanks that are running a calcium reactor. So adding this calc reactor will help elevate the pH. And uh, I just feel that that's going to be beneficial overall for my system. Also, for those of you who have been here for a while, you know that I'm a gear junkie and I really like having this type of stuff on my system. Now, having a calcium reactor and then having to balance my alkalinity demands on the tank with a calc reactor is just a challenging uh, side of things. And it's actually, it's not really that difficult, but it is more complex than just uh, dosing two part or having an ATO full of calc. It's just, uh, it kind of fuels my need to progress in the hobby. And I really like the idea of using both of them together. Also, I have uh, friends with systems that are smaller than mine with bigger calcium reactors who still can't keep up with the demand of the tank and they're dosing calc as well as two part on top of it to supplement whatever the calcium reactor can't keep up with and uh, i do anticipate having a lot of coral in this tank someday so we'll see if uh, this calcium reactor can keep up with it which i'm more than uh, confident that it can but uh, it's always nice to have a backup plan just in case it can't well guys that's about it for this video i hope you enjoyed it and found it to be somewhat entertaining now, if you have any questions about this project, please put it in the comment section below, and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. And for those of you who are really good at Apex programming, please let me know if there's a better way to do this. I have looked all over, and uh, I will admit I didn't put a ton of time into it because I had a general idea of what I wanted to do regarding the programming. But if you know a better way to set up between the dosing schedule of both the mixing pump and what I'm currently dosing, please put a link to whatever form in the description below or simply write it out. Um, I will appreciate that more than you will ever know. Trust me. And um, yeah, I'm definitely not one to claim that I'm a, uh, a pro at the Apex. I do know it quite a bit and I help a lot of people with the Apex, but there's just certain things that I don't know and I'm always up for learning. So thank you ahead of time for that. Now, when it comes to this reactor, I will give you guys a six month update, if not before that. And I'll give you the pros and cons, what equipment failed, worked, kind of how the reactor is performing. And I'll probably talk about it here and there throughout my rambling videos just to keep you guys in the loop. Now, if you guys want to support this channel, definitely check out fishofhex.com for coral inverts and t-shirt sales. I really do appreciate the support. You guys have been helping me out a lot. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to see how the channel progresses and how we move forward here uh, with the business. So either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you later. Peace.